on the Arts on Newsworld and Newsworld International. Today, indie folk, a mellow Martin Amos, and a new Dane. Selfish and generous, he's good and he's an asshole. He's Hamlet. It may be a gross exaggeration, but Stratford's newest celebrity actor, Paul Gross, plays oh, Hamlet like a hockey yeah. player. Canada's favorite Mountie takes on the Danish prince. Next on On the Arts, Paul Gross as Hamlet. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. Fellow of infinite jest. Paul Gross has a lot of nerve. First, he was an award-winning playwright. Then he went on to act and executive produce the highly successful series, Do South. Then he started a band. He's got one CD out and another one coming. But when Stratford Festival called and asked how he'd like to spend his summer here, his confidence was shaken for just a moment. Because to be or not to be Hamlet, now there's a very challenging question. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Or to take arms against a sea of troubles. And by opposing, end them to die, to sleep. No more. The Hamlets are, are really in, incomparable. Each one is unique to itself. And it's a very odd fraternity of people who have played it because it stands outside of any other dramatic experience, I think. Did you think, ever think you'd play it? No, and I never had any particular interest in playing it either. I think partly because it was the, a couple of Hamlets I had seen were not very interesting. And it was bad the first time I'd encountered it. The teacher who was dealing with it was a terrible teacher. So the play just it never was ignited inside me. And then actually I saw Joe Ziegler play Hamlet in the production that Robin Phillips directed in Edmonton. And, and my wife was playing Ophelia in that, Martha Burns. And it was the first time that I... Oh, my God, this is a great play. <laughs> I know, it's all sounds sort of stupid, isn't it? Hey, this is really good writing. But still, even at that point, I didn't think I'd ever play it or particularly pursued it. Because I didn't, I didn't also think I was capable. I didn't think I had the internal makeup for it somehow. Partly this just has to do with a misreading or misunderstanding of the play. But I didn't think I was light enough for it. And, that, and I didn't think I had enough uh, a reservoir of self-loathing for it. Some someone discovered I have plenty of that. <laughs> Describe your Hamlet. Who is your guy? What kind of a guy is oh. he? I, I think Hamlet, mine is selfish and generous. He's good and he's an asshole. He's irritating and he's the smartest guy you've ever met. He's funny and he's and cruel. He's sort of all of those things rolled up into one with no sense, no, uh, does not know how to get out of this mess. Did you ever think you could fail at this? I don't think it's one of those, I don't think it's a part that, that, that those questions even apply to actually. Did, can, can you fail? Can you succeed? Uh, how, is it doable? It's, it's sort of rather like you throw everything you have and you add that into the common understanding of what that part means to all of us. Um, and, and I think anybody who's playing the role knows that you're really standing on the backs of, and it sounds cliché, but it's true, you are on the backs of everybody from Keanu Reeves on down to Burbage. You know? Everybody has chipped something into this big pot that we now call Hamlet. Ethan Hawke is currently taking his kick at the can with a contemporary interpretation of the tormented Danish prince, but we lost one of the truly great Hamlets last week when at 96, Sir John Gielgud passed away. Your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were want to set the table on a raw. So, how does Gross stack up against the others? Hard to tell from only this single scene. Stratford refused to let us shoot any more. But I saw the play and Gross delivers a bold, smart, testosterone-fueled Hamlet. No whining, no wimpiness, Gross is the yammer yager of Hamlets. Now, some critics may be appalled, but I bet audiences will love it. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. 
fellow of infinite jest. Physically, give me a review of what you go through and what kind of an experience it is to play that role. It feels quite similar to if you've been skiing for a full day, a very hard skiing. And at the end, that's what you feel like at the end of it. It's quite good, but spent. And then it depends on how much I've banged myself up in the course of it. I find you have to start it at an extremely weak point. And for me to get to the, um, the emotional weakness, I also have to be sort of physically weak. So I, on days we're doing the show, I'll work out for a couple of hours before I get here. And then I get, as soon as I feel like I can't quite stand up, then I think, all right, now I'm ready to get ready for the play. In this whole rehearsal process and still on stage, is there one line, is there one speech that for you is so dense and chewy that you're, you're always astounded by? There are a couple things that I'm not quite sure how to do yet, or I haven't, I know what they are intellectually, but with that kind of complete connection I haven't experienced. And one of them is with, it's a speech with my mother where she says, what shall I do? And he says, not this by no means that I bid you do. Let the bloat king tempt you again to his bed, pinch wanton on your cheek. It's a very weirdly inverted, oddly constructed thing. Um, so I try different things with it. And I know one of these days it'll suddenly go, ding, and I go, oh, that's what it is. Your wife has been in Stratford yeah. for a long time. What's been her best advice for you climbing up on these boards? I was sort of nervous about these school matinees and actually talking initially saying, well, do I have to do them? I mean, maybe I don't have to do all these student matinees. She said, that's actually what you're there for. That's the real reason, is to imprint these kids with a show that hopefully will carry them through for the rest of their lives. And if you're lucky enough, you get 10% of them to be excited by live theater and by Shakespeare in particular, then you've done a great service. So, What do you think it's going to feel like going back to doing film or television? Does it, is it just two totally different worlds? Uh, yeah. Film's obviously very different from this. I don't know. I, I, I'm a little concerned that at, at the end of this, I may just quit acting. Cause <laughs> Why? I, I, it's very hard to imagine any part being quite as exciting and challenging and fulfilling as it's frustrating, and, but it's all of the possible things that you could experience doing a role. I can't see another one having that. Well, I know there isn't. Paul Gross told me he wanted to bolt just days before previews of Hamlet began, just drop the whole thing. He was so spooked about the role, but he stuck it out. Shakespeare's Hamlet is now on at Stratford Festival until November 5th. Thanks for watching. See you again, same time, same place.